this series of videos explains decompression theory. In the first video, we looked at half times. In the second video, compartments. In the third video, m values. In the fourth video, the reason for the WXYZ rule, which was to do with surface interval credit. And in this, the fifth video, we will look at Navy tables versus the RDP and the differences between them. Uh, remember, you can watch and find these videos very, very easily in the order they're designed to be watched in by going to my website, goprocaribbean.com slash decotheory. And also, please remember that I haven't monetized these videos so that adverts do not ruin your viewing of them. I would really appreciate it if, whenever possible, you could post links to my website, goprocaribbean.com, on your own website, on your blog, whatever. If these videos have helped you, help other people find them and help the SEO of my website and that's why I won't need to monetize them. So the differences between the Navy tables and the RDP. There are likely to be, if not one, two questions in the PADI exam on why the Navy tables and the RDP would differ and why the pressure groups are not interchangeable between these different tables. So basically, what are the differences between the RDP, the older Navy tables, uh, and the main reason is that Navy tables were designed for decompression diving. Well, yep, you're probably thinking, what on earth does that mean? Why would the tables differ whether you're going to be decompression diving or not? Well, let's have a look at why. So I've brought up a graph or a chart that you're very, very familiar with. And what we're going to do is use it to look at what might happen during a decompression stop at a depth of 25 feet. So what we're imagining is that we have been on a dive requiring decompression. At the point we start out on our deco stop at 25 feet, our five different compartments have the following nitrogen loadings. Now, I know we've looked at this chart and imagined that this was a chart that didn't require nitrogen loading, uh, decompression stop. But let's just imagine, for whatever reason, we've decided we need to do a decompression stop on this particular dive. And let's see what happens when we do this 25-foot deco stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mark the depth at which we're doing a deco stop. And then what we'll see is that the 10 and 30 minute compartments, they already have a nitrogen loading above 25 feet. In fact, as does the 60 foot compartment. So the 10, 30 and 60 foot compartments are going to be off gassing nitrogen during this 25 foot stop. But the 90 and 120 minute compartments are not yet at 25 feet. So during this decompression stop, they are still going to be on gassing. So we have got a situation where we have faster compartments off gassing, but slower compartments still on gassing. And to represent the differences between what you see right now and what happens during this deco stop, I've decided to bring in a new color. I'm bringing in green to help you see what's actually happening. So I started the deco stop and the 10, 30 and 60 minute compartments are off gassing and the 90 and 120 minute compartments are on gassing. So imagine an incredibly long deco stop. We're now at 30 minutes and this is how the different compartments may look. Some off gassing and some on gassing. So we're at 50 minutes and the 90 minute compartment has basically reached it and the 120 minute compartment has reached its M value. So we're now in a situation where some compartments have off gassed and some compartments have on gassed. What's actually happened is that the slow compartments during this decompression stop, the compartments with a half time slower than 60 minutes, have actually now got very close or even reached their M values. So we're in a situation where as a result of doing a decompression stop, we have managed to get our very slow tissue compartments 
very, very close, if not up to their M values. So unlike the RDP, where the slow tissue compartments very rarely get close to their M values, unless you do an incredibly long, incredibly shallow dive, when you're deco diving, it is actually more likely that you will get your slow tissues close to their M values. And that is why the Navy tables, because they were designed for decompression diving, had to be designed differently. We've just seen that when decompression diving, it is more likely that you will surface with significant nitrogen loading in the slower tissue compartments. This is the reason that the Navy tables, which were designed with decompression diving in mind, had to use a slower tissue compartment to calculate the surface interval credit. The Navy tables use a 120 minute compartment instead of the RDP's 60 minute compartment to calculate the surface interval credit. And we already saw that the RDP's 60 minute surface interval credit significantly underestimates the amount of nitrogen in the slower tissues. And that explains why increasing the surface interval credit to a 120 minute surface interval credit would help when you were worried about the slower tissues that might be closer to their M values. Of course, what it also means from what we've previously seen is that the fast tissues at the end of a surface interval with a 120 minute credit, they're going to calculate that you have a lot more nitrogen in your body than it would calculate if you were using a 60 minute credit. Let's have a look. Let's compare now a 120 minute credit table to a 60 minute credit surface interval table. And let's look at how it would calculate the amount of nitrogen you have left in your body after a surface interval. So we've gone back to our favorite old chart that the, the amount of nitrogen you've got in your body after a 40 foot dive where, you, where your 60 minute compartment hit the NDL after 60 minutes. So we've come to the surface. Let's see how these do, two different tables calculate the release of gas. So we are seeing this 60 minute surface interval credit table lower in every section. The RDP is assuming in all five of the compartments in this model that after a surface interval you have less and less nitrogen in your body than the older US Navy tables would assume you have in your body. So now we can see after a 120 minute surface interval, every single compartment has more nitrogen loading in it if you're using a 120 minute surface interval credit than if you were using a 60 minute surface interval credit. The RDP uses a 60 minute surface interval credit and the older US Navy tables used a 120 minute surface interval credit because they were designed with decompression diving in mind. So now we need to realize that if we were planning to do a repetitive dive, what would happen? Well, because the RDP with its 60 minute surface interval credit calculates we have less residual nitrogen in our body than the older Navy tables calculate, the RDP would give, uh, give us a longer repetitive dive time. The other way you could look at it is the RDP would allow you to do a shorter surface interval to do 
the same dive time on a repetitive dive as the older Navy tables would allow you to do. So the RDP uses a 60 minute surface interval credit and the older tables use a 120 minute gas washout tissue. This means that after a surface interval, the Navy tables will calculate there is more residual nitrogen in your body than the RDP does. This is one of the reasons the pressure groups are not interchangeable between the different tables. If you were to take a pressure group from the RDP and then use the Navy table to calculate a repetitive dive or whatever, they'd all be out of kilter. And the reason for that is that they are using a different surface interval credit table. The reason that they're using a different surface interval credit table uh, and the fact that the RDP assumes you have less nitrogen in your body at the end of a surface interval than the Navy table assumes you have allows for shorter surface intervals when using the RDP and or longer repetitive dives when using the RDP. That is a key thing to put in your notes. So let's summarize what we've learned not only in this, the fifth video of the series, but all of the videos. If you have got nothing else written down in your notes in preparation for these PADI RDP exams, at least have these points noted. The RDP is designed using a model with 14 compartments. It calculates the residual nitrogen after a surface interval using a 60 minute surface interval credit or a 60 minute gas washout tissue compartment. Older tables used a 120 minute surface interval credit. The RDP has a 14 compartment model with a surface interval credit of 60 minutes, once again. And the RDP allows for shorter surface intervals or longer repetitive dives than the older Navy tables. And pressure group designations are not interchangeable between different tables.